This is the future of AI video. And no, I'm not just talking about a lady wearing leather pants, standing up and walking away. Although whoever put this example together, I mean, they knew how to get some attention. Cheesecake aside, while this example is very good, it doesn't even showcase the game changer of this model, which is something that I have not seen until this point. Okay, let's dive in. So it all started last week with some whispers and rumors about a new state-of-the-art video model. I eventually tracked that down to Jimung, which is actually ByteDance's AI image and video platform. But the results that I saw there, I mean, they were just kind of okay. It's, it's not necessarily terrible or anything. It's just not exactly what I would call state-of-the-art. There is also this weird frame rate issue that I kind of noticed in a lot of the Jimung outputs, but we're going to put a pin in that. Now, Jimung, again, is ByteDance, so obviously logging in is, you know, it turns into a whole Chinese mobile phone number situation, uh, or you have to use the Douyin app, which is the Chinese version of TikTok. Now, I did try to sidestep this as I managed to with Kling or Keeling as it's actually pronounced, and I'm still probably screwing that up, uh, but no joy there. But then I remembered there's actually an international version of this called Dreamina. Unfortunately, uh, you are not able to generate videos there yet. Reasonable people probably would have stopped here, but I had the detective's hat on. So I reached out to my inside source at ByteDance and struck gold. Mr. X tipped me off to Seaweed, which is ByteDance's new state-of-the-art video model. And while, again, this looks very impressive, it is image to video and text to video, uh, this little sizzle reel is actually hiding its real superpower. Because here is the real game changer, uh, kicking off with this image prompt of a hiker in some misty woods, uh, realizing that that wasn't a bear that she heard. This looks pretty good, but just wait for it. Um, here it comes right about, yeah, right there. That's pretty crazy. So again, just to hit home, what we have is a 10 second clip with a hard cut to a reverse angle. And I'm not gonna call her the victim. I'm, I think she's final girl. I think she's making it to the end of the movie. Um, she is consistently the same character. She's wearing the same outfit. Now, granted, we don't have an establishing shot of her face here, but again, I mean, she's wearing the same clothes, same hairstyle. And to be clear, this isn't a first frame, last frame thing, because when you do try to do first frame, last frame, you end up with stuff like this. It is also remarkably good at rack focusing. Take, for example, this very kind of like David Fincher looking shot in which we have this woman who, what I think is happening is that she's meeting up with some gangsters who she sent out on a mission and they are about to find out what happens when you fail her. Rack focus is obviously a pretty important part of the cinematic vocabulary. And you know, to date, I have not seen any other AI video generator really be able to pull this off. Side note, do you think that this scene is actually a flashback from the previous scene we saw with the henchmen? I think it is. I think we're looking at Joanna Wick here. Interestingly, Seaweed is able to pull off these fairly complex, temporally consistent and coherent outputs by utilizing a 3D spatial temporal joint attention mechanism to model complex movements and interactions accurately. The architecture allows it to generate videos that comply with the laws of physics. So does that mean that we are coming to the end of this era of AI video? Uh, yeah, probably, um, which is unfortunate in some ways because I still really enjoy this stuff. It's, it's super surreal and hilarious. Hopping back over to Seaweed, we have this output of a guy in a leather jacket sipping on some coffee, probably thinking about his motorcycle because his girlfriend made him sell it. Really solid consistency with the hands there. Uh, drinking looks realistic. And I mean, just look at this tension as she touches him. Like, like, look at that, look at that. He is not happy about selling that motorcycle. Now I will admit that there is a little bit of wonk in her hand as she comes around the corner. It looks like she's holding a cell phone and then as she reaches around, like it does, it kind of loses track and doesn't know what to do with that phone. But at least her fingers don't turn into a bunch of spiders. I mean, you've seen that output. We also have this oneer, which kind of showcases Seaweed's ability to maintain temporal consistency when you're moving the camera in rotations or 360s. Uh, this is very much a, I don't know, like any Leibowitz or like Chanel type ad. But, you know, as we pan around this character's face, like it still maintains and holds to that character. But again, I think the real insanity in this model is what I think they're calling intelligent cuts of which you can get up to three per clip. For example, taking this shot, which is you know obviously very Chinese historical costume drama, um, 
runs about 10 seconds long and we get three shots out of it. Not only do we get an establishing action shot, but we get two reaction shots, both of which are fairly heavily emoted. Here's another three-er, and admittedly, I don't necessarily love the aesthetics of this particular sequence, but uh, the prompt here was a bizarre Cthulhu story. So I, I don't know who you are, Chinese prompt writer, but whoever you are, we're best friends. Moving on to another example where I don't necessarily love the overall aesthetics of it, but I mean, you gotta give it up to this prompt coherence. The prompt here, and again, translated from Chinese is, the white robot raises both hands and holds a rifle, shooting continuously at the left side of the screen. A green energy beam shoots out from the muzzle. The camera changes to a black robot on the left side of the screen, and the green beam quickly shoots in from the right side of the screen, hitting its body. The black robot is knocked down and explodes. The screen changes and the white robot looks at the explosion. It looks at the explosion in the distance, turns around, and walks out of the scene. And that robot knows that cool guys never look at the explosion. I mean, you gotta give it up to the prompt adherence in that uh, it, pretty much all of the details are there. Additionally, what kind of blows me away here is that this first shot, I, you know, I'm, I highly suspect that that's image to video. So when we hit the third shot in which there is no image reference, we still pretty much get the same robot. Now, there are some things like the landscape, Martian landscape, if that's what it is, does look a little bland, but you know, that mushroom cloud is pretty cool. Now, one thing I did want to circle back on is that weird frame rate thing that I saw in the Jemeng outputs. Now, seaweed does seem to be doing the same thing, at least in the examples that I was providing. Provided. I did reach out to Mr. X about this, and he did say he wasn't aware of any frame rate issues. So again, this might have been a hiccup in uh, the examples that I was provided. So basically what we've been looking at are outputs that I ran through Topaz just for a frame interpolation to kind of, you know, smooth things out. Other than that, there was no other AI enhancements done on those outputs. Again, I did talk to Mr. X about this. He wasn't aware of any stuttery or frame rate issues. So I think that this will be a non-issue when we get seaweeds release. Uh, yes, we will talk about that in just a minute. Now, even crazier than everything that we've seen thus far, uh, apparently seaweed is capable of rendering videos up to two minutes long at 1080p. Two minutes! And that to me feels very much like a shot right at Sora, uh, considering, and who knows, because it never actually released, uh, Sora maxed out at one minute long clips. Now, according to a report from the information, OpenAI is supposedly working on a new version of Sora, one that will be better quality wise. I, I don't know, I just, I have my doubts as to if we'll actually see it. Meanwhile, ByteDance is clearly zeroing in on them. Uh, according to a report, ByteDance has an aggressive pricing strategy at 0 0.0002 cents per token, as opposed to OpenAI's 0 0.03 cents per token. As to why ByteDance is going so hard here, well, according to some rumor and speculation, uh, this is all part of a move to pivot away from social media and TikTok. They're going hard on AI filmmaking with a tool that is very specifically honed in on filmmakers, animators, and marketing agencies. Now, as to the question of when you get to play with seaweed, well, I, I did speak to Mr. X about this, and I mean, the best I can say is don't hold your breath until after November because politics, which look, I totally get. And in some ways I have to say, it's nice to hear that there are some adults in the room, but this isn't a vaporware situation. The model does exist and is actually in testing. It's just that that testing is limited to a very select few. And of course, only in China right now, which look, I know might bum you out, but I think more than anything, what this all serves as is a look at what the next wave iteration of AI video is going to look like the 2.5 or 3.0 version. And I can't say too much here because I'm under like 50 NDAs. All I can say is that I am going to be making a lot of videos over the next few months. In the meantime, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.